called rendering. Rendering is mark making to create tone and texture, which are both elements of art. You can use these effects to make an object look 3D, as well as show what the surface quality of the object is. For example, turning a square into a cube is 3D. And then drawing on the object to give it a feeling of, for example, wood, is creating the surface quality. This is where architects, landscapers or interior designers could create an impression to show the client how a visual um, design might look. Rendering techniques. You can almost use any medium to create a rendering. Your trusty pencil has different tonal values that can be applied from a 9H to a 9B. I think that's the right um, numbers. You can use gouache, which is a paint, coloured pencils, watercolour pencils, ink, ink watercolours, um, a computer, airbrushing. Different paper surfaces can also be effective. Light, surfaces, light sources uh, is also very important. You need to know where your light is coming from. When the object is close to the light, it is usually lighter, and as it gets further away, it becomes gradually darker. The object can also have a highlight, which is pretty much a straight white reflection that you can see on objects, as well as a dark tone uh, when it's further away, and your objects will cast a shadow. Tonal scale. Well, I'm going to show you a different tonal scales, or another term for it is called scales with different values. Here you'll see me use different mark making and mediums to create light to dark, which I can then use on my objects to make them 3D. And I also use that sort of tonal value, that scale in my own drawings as well. A rendering with a pencil, usually a graphite pencil, which is enclosed in wood. Um, I also like a graphite stick, but when I use a graphite stick, I tend to use it um, when I'm doing much larger drawings, but you can use uh, that as well. Pencils have different grades from, I think it's a 9H, which I feel like it's drawing with an actual pin, like you do with sewing, through to a 9B, which is really soft. It smudges really easy, um, but you can create some really great dark areas on a piece of work. My fave is generally a 2B or a 4B. Now with that sort of pencil, I can change the amount of pressure that I apply to create both darks to light tones and have good control over the direction of my marks as well. You can also use a paper stump to blend your pencil or your fingertips. But when you use your fingertips, you've got to be careful that you don't have um, dirty hands or your hands aren't oily or can leave oils on your paper because it's hard to, I find, probably get it off once you've done that. Um, one of my favourite things to blend with is an, actually an earbud cleaner. So um, they're great, you know, you can keep them clean, you just throw them out and just get a freshie when you're ready. Okay, so if I'm using pen or ink to do my rendering, when using a pen or fine liner, instead of changing the tonal pressure, so that's how hard you press down or how light, you need to pay attention to your mark making. For example, you can use dots, and another name for dots is called stippling or pointillism. You can use hatching, or you can use cross-hatching. Now, hatching or cross-hatching can be really good. Um, with your hatching, all your lines tend to go the same way, and you need to sort of have a consistent amount of um, mark making that you do and then if you want to cross hatch them you just go back in a different direction you need to take your time you need to be consistent in what it is that you're doing with this to make it pretty effective you can also use colored pencils um, airbrushing uh, computer software for example Adobe Illustrator or Adobe Photoshop now I don't know how to use those but if you know how to use them and you want to um, do them for a future exercise do you're very welcome to have a go at those Okay, so what we're going to be doing in class is I have made a handout um, that River at School you would be using, but since we're not at school, you're welcome to um, maybe even photograph it and print it out or just freehand um, some squares and some shapes and um, some 3D objects and put them all together. That's fine. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is step one is looking at the tonal scale or the value scale. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six sets of squares with five blocks in each. And you're going to be looking at the amount of pressure that you apply to a pencil and the amount of mark making that you do for some of the different techniques. So the first one is looking at a pencil. And when you watch me do my example, what I do is I sort of start in that second box because the first one I leave light. And then I put sort of a tonal rendering over the whole other four 
shapes and then I go to the middle one and then I make it a little bit darker and then I go to the second one and I make it a little bit darker, continuing it over all of the shapes until I get a nice dark section. The next one is hatching and I've used a fine liner to do this one. Uh, what I've done is all my marks are going in one particular direction um, and then to make it a little bit darker I've put more marks on there and I've made them a little bit closer. The third one is what's called cross hatching. So hatching is going the other way, you guessed it. Cross hatching is just going in a different direction. So you're crisscrossing your lines. Pointillism, uh, you can use, call it dots, it can call be called stippli stippling. Now this is a really effective medium, but you have to be patient with this one. Um, take your time with all of your um, rendering, uh, tonal values. Um, so you start off with doing your dots, don't break your pen. And I find using um, a marker a little bit easier. So you can use a texture if you have a texture, I don't mind. Now, um, as you want to make it darker, you're putting more and more dots together. Don't be tempted to start colouring in because you just want to stick with the dots. Fifth one is called stumbling. Now I quite like, I like most of them, sorry, uh, stumbling as well. So it's like thought about scribbling. So I kind of do S's or letter C's or, and then I start to work over it and then work over it again in the next block and so forth till that's all done. Then the next one is colour and I've used a red colouring in pencil so I've done it the same way as I've done my graphite pencil, the first one. I've put a layer over the whole lot and then I've started from the next block and then I put another layer on and then the fourth one and another layer on so that keeps um, that sort of even tone with your colours. Then you're going to step two, which is on the right hand side of the page. 
Now here I've drawn a cube and you'll notice there's a little light bulb. That's your light source. Super important for when you're doing your tonal rendering. Now one of the things I am considerate of is the direction of my marks when I'm doing this. So you can turn your paper if that's easier. And the other thing is the other box on the ground, that's like a shadow. I try to not quite join my shadow to my object. In real life drawing it is, but when you're doing your own drawing, a little tip and a trick is just sometimes to give a little gap. Um, you don't have to do the gap the whole way along, but just leave a little inference that there's a gap between the block and the shadow. Underneath that, you're doing some cross hatching. So I did the cross hatching with, I think, a 0.6 fine liner. Underneath that one is the pointillism. And again, what that was is doing the dots and you really need to take your time in doing that one. You'll see I got a little bit bored with that. So I started to use two pens and then I went, oh, okay, I better show you the right example. So then I went back to using one. The fourth one underneath that was a circle that I'm going to try and make into a sphere. And again, you can see my light source and the technique that I'm using is stumbling. So that's the little scribbling and you work around, build up your layers, take your time. And then I've also done with that with a shadow. So step one, step two, and then step three is all yours. You can see I've drawn a collection of um, 3D shapes and then I've chosen the first medium which is the pencil uh, doing a tonal value. I've also sketched in a little bit of a light source as well um, and you want to include some shadows. Now when you, if you're watching me do this you will notice that I turn my paper constantly and the other thing I do when I'm using my pencil is once I start to do a little bit of tonal work, you know how your pencil gets that sort of a little bit of a, a flat side? Um, that gives you a nice edge to do tonal work rather than using the point constantly, which can be a little bit scribbly. Uh, so that's a little tip and trick as well. Okay, so there's three steps for you to have a go at doing. Um, if you can print it out, that's fine. If you want to just draw your own, you're very welcome to do that. Go through the steps and I'll probably get you to take a photo and upload that one for me. Thank you.